Gonna learn something today. We're going over valve lash, which is a very critical part of building any engine. And there's a lot of different variables and factors that will affect what your valve lash is and what it needs to be set to. So what is going on guys and welcome back to the channel. Now, as you guys are aware, I'm going through rebuilding my EJ257 right now to go back into this 05 STI. But before we can even get the cams in there, get the valve covers on there and all of the other fun stuff that goes with building the motor, we need to know what our valve lash needs to be. Now, if you don't know what valve lash is, it's going to be the measurement between between the bucket, which is this guy, some people call them lifters, some people call them uh, what, what are the tappets? Whole, whole bunch of names for these stupid things. I just call them buckets. So it's the measurement between the bucket and the lobe of the cam. And that controls the duration of how long the valve stays open and when it opens and closes, obviously. Now, if you have these measurements wrong and you don't have the correct sizes in there, you do run the risk of having valves bent. You could have valve to valve contact. You could have valve to piston contact. Um, or your motor's just not going to run right because you have the wrong size buckets in there all together. So let me show you guys what you need to go over this. I'll show you the mathematical formula you need to use to be able to calculate all this. And then I'll show you guys how to do this. Now, like I said, there's going to be multiple factors that control what bucket size you need. As you guys can see in this box, these are all of my old buckets. I cannot use them. I've already gone through and pulled the lash measurements and ordered the bucket sizes I need for that motor. But the things that control lash measurement, obviously it's going to be what cams you're running uh, because the spec of the cam is going to control what your lash needs to be set to. You're also going to have all of these buckets. Now, if you look on the inside of these buckets, there is a measurement right there. This one is a 438. That is going to be in millimeters. That's 4.38 millimeters. If you were to take a measurement from the inside nipple right there to the face of the bucket, that is what your measurement is going to be for that. Now, this is a used bucket. This is a 499 bucket. I would not suggest using used buckets to take your measurements off of. The difference between these two buckets, aside from size, is that one is true and one is not. And what that means is because this one is a brand new 438 bucket, we know that one is true. It has not been ran in the car and no material has been worn off of this one. So we can 100% guarantee that that is a 438 bucket. Now, just because this one says 499, this bucket has been used for X amount of miles and some material has been worn off of that bucket. Now, if you wanted to, you could get a set of micrometers and measure what the measurement is from the face to the nipple to confirm the measurement, but it's a lot easier just to get the correct bucket size. Now, I do suggest ordering the smallest bucket size possible when doing this because your lash measurements are going to be dictated off of this and if you order a bucket that's too big it's not going to clear the lobe of the cam to the bucket and you're going to be touching it happened to me on a couple of them just because my my valves and everything like that sit a lot closer so kind of what dictates where your valve sit is how many times your valve seats have been cut what cams you're using uh, that's pretty much the main factors that dictate it but uh, because my valve seats have been cut already and we have brand new valves in here it pushes the valve stem out a little bit further. So all of my buckets are a lot smaller compared to what they were before. When I went through here, these averaged out to about a 474 bucket. All of my new buckets kind of average out to a 440 to a 450, somewhere in that range. Now with these cams, the spec that we're setting everything to is 8 thou on the intake and 10 thou on the exhaust. We have about plus or minus two thou on each of those ones. Now the tools you guys are gonna need to be able to do this is going to be a set of feeler gauges. Uh, you're gonna need a 10 millimeter just to be able to torque down all of the cam caps. Uh, also don't get your cam caps confused because they are married to the head and to what side of the cam they actually go on. Uh, you're gonna need a small torque wrench. This is just an inch pound tech Tekken, tech, tecton torque wrench, whatever that thing is called. You're gonna need a magnet to be able to pull buckets out. Uh, you're obviously gonna need the hardware for this. And then you're going to need a small piece of paper or a whiteboard. So the formula that we're using is B plus V minus D equals N. So B is going to be our constant bucket, what we're using to measure with. That's gonna be our 438 bucket. That size is gonna be determined by whatever bucket you decide to use to pull all, all of these measurements with. V is gonna be our actual lash between the bucket and and the lobe of the cam so that way we know what we're working with. Minus D. D is going to be the desired lash of what we want and I'll give you guys an example of this formula when we go to pull our first measurement. And then N is going to be our new bucket size so I've just kind of kind of got it labeled over here and then I drew this chart. So this is based off of the passenger side head of the car. So we've got our intake buckets on the top, exhaust buckets on the bottom. We have it labeled back, front, and then I just did intake and exhaust so that way we know what we're working with. So let's jump over to the engine so that way I can actually show you guys how to measure the lash and how to use this formula. 
All right, so when we're going through this and doing this, uh, it does help to have a little bit of assembly lube on here. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do both an exhaust and an intake side. It's going to be the same for all of these. Now, when you're going through and doing this, if you only order one 438 bucket like I did, uh, it's going to take a little bit longer. Obviously, the more 438 buckets you have, the quicker it will be because you don't have to put one bucket in, measure it, pull it out, one bucket in, measure it, pull it out, and keep going down the sequence. So we'll start on the exhaust side. We're gonna end up taking our 438 bucket and we're just gonna slide it in over the valve train right there. Now you can see the 438 bucket, it sits nicely in there. We have no idea if it's the right size or not. So with our bucket in here, now we can get the cam set in here and then we can get our cam caps tightened down. So we wanna grab our exhaust cam here and put him in his home. He spins freely, which is perfect. Now we'll get our cam caps on. Now when you go to install your cam caps, there is an arrow on there for direction. The arrow does need to point forward uh, towards the front of the engine. Grab our bigger cam cap, get him set on here. So with all of our bolts snugged up, we're gonna go ahead and torque all of the cam cap bolts down. All of the rear ones, the two bigger on both ends of the cam cap are gonna get torqued down to 14.5 foot pounds. The front ones are gonna get torqued down to seven foot pounds. Do not go any more than that. So with our lobe pointing away from the bucket, we now need to measure the gap between the backside of the lobe and the face of the bucket. With our handy dandy feeler gauges here, we're gonna start sticking in sizes to, sizes to see kind of where we fall. Since I know mine are a little bit bigger, I'm gonna start on the higher end at 15 thou and kind of go from there. So we're gonna be using a 15 thou feeler gauge, it's just 0 0.015, it also gives you the millimeters of 0.38. We're gonna stick that back behind there it goes in no problem. So that means we have a bigger gap. So now we're gonna jump up to like a point, uh, we'll go point oh two oh and kind of see where we fall. So point, so 20 thou does not fit. So we're somewhere between 15 and 20 thou. So we'll go, we'll go 18. We'll see where we fall there. 18 thou fits, it's got a little bit of drag. I suspect that 18 thou is our gap. I'm gonna try 19 and I don't suspect 19 will go in. If you have to force the feeler gauge in, that is not your measurement. You don't wanna to have to force it in. So 19 thou does not fit, it's not even close. So we'll go back to the 18, we'll double check our measurement, make sure that 18 thou is our gap. And then we know what the valve lash is right there. So right now, it's currently at 18 thou. It goes in no problem, slides in and out. It's solid. So front bucket, 18 thou. So now that we know this bucket right here, this front exhaust bucket is 0, 0.18 inch. Don't mind my terrible handwriting. We know that it's 18 thou. So we need to convert that over to millimeters now. You can use the measurement off of the feeler gauge if you want, it's just 0.45 millimeters. I prefer to go to a calculator and just do it that way. So that gives us 0.4572, which is close to that. The 4572 just gives us a more accurate reading. So with that, we can write down the 0.4572. That's our current lash. And we need to be at 10 thou on the exhaust side. So we have a big difference between where we are and where we need to be. So that's where this equation comes in. So using our equation here, we know that we're using uh, we, we know we're using a 4.38 bucket. Then we're going to go ahead and add our actual lash, which was 0.4572. And then we're gonna minus what we want. So we need to convert 10 thou over. So I'm gonna put 0 0.010 and convert that to millimeters. 254 millimeters. So we know that 10 thou is 0.254 millimeters. So we can go ahead and add that to our equation and subtract 0.254. Now doing this equation will give us our new bucket size for what we need. So if we open up a calculator here, 4.38 plus 0.4572, we can add that. That comes out to 4.8372. Now we need to minus what we're looking for, which is 0.254, and that is going to be 10 thou. So the bucket size we need for that front one is going to be 4.58 or a 458 bucket. Now what I like to do is write that down inside of this new bucket, there, the one that I drew here, so 4.58. So now we know what bucket size we need there, because we started with a 438 bucket there. We calculated 
selected the current lash and then we adjusted that so that way we could figure out what our other lash will be. So that's all I got for you guys on this one. I hoped this helped you guys out. There are multiple ways to go through there and measure lash. Uh, this is the best and most effective way I have found to do it. That'll also reduce cost as much as possible because like I said, buckets get expensive quick. They're gonna delay your build if you do order the wrong sizes and your measurements are wrong or your formula's wrong. And they're also going to have a heavy impact on your wallet, especially at $25 a piece. They add up pretty quick. So, and I also highly suggest that you guys take these measurements with the heads bolted to the short block, just because there is a possibility that lash will change uh, once the heads are actually torqued down to the short block. So, that's all I got for you guys on this one. I will link down below all of the tools that you guys need, as well as the source to order the buckets for Subaru specifically. So if you like the video, you know what to do. Go ahead, hit that like button, turn it black, blue, green, yellow, purple, magenta, cyan, amber, um, I ran out of colors. Whatever color it turns for you, and if you're not already subscribed to the channel, hit your boy up, because you don't want to miss that EJ going to the dyno and making some power, or the six cylinder going in the other STI. So with that, I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace out, homies.